for joining me. Now, I'll tell you what, I watched that uh, entire meeting for over two and a half hours. It was a stellar performance on your behalf, and I'm very pleased you were there to ask the questions that I wanted to ask. So for the benefit of our viewers, in layman's terms, can you explain what are the integrated care systems and what purpose does it aim to serve? Because that was what the whole sort of question was, and we were trying to find out what it was doing. Well, Nana, thank you for having me on and thank you for your kind compliment. But the, the, the PAC is an all-party committee with a very good chairman in, in Meg Hillier. And, you know, we, we took turns to grill the chief executive of NHS England, Amanda Pritchard, and the permanent undersecretary at the Department of Health and Social Care, uh, Sir Chris Wormold, about the operation of the, of the NHS. And we, we asked some probing questions because that's our job, just to explain to your viewers the job of the Public Accounts Committee is to scrutinise the spending of all government departments and to make sure that the money is spent, taxpayers' money, is spent as Parliament intended it. And it was the NHS's turn on this, on this occasion. Now, the, so that was going, what was going on. The integrated care systems it, it is a new reorganisation of the NHS at ground level. And the theory is, is that you will more integrate the NHS with local government social services and, you know, to provide a more seamless service, if you like, in order to address issues like discharging people who are medically well from hospital, but who haven't got a care package in place. That's the theory of it. And what we were doing for two and a half hours was, you know, we were pressing to test to examine how well that actually works in practice. Now, I, I, now, you did sort of question them quite heavily, and I'm glad you did, because some of the questions that were asked, especially with regard to dentistry and also with regard to things being implemented, and um, I, I noticed when I was watching that what struck me was that it was difficult to get straight answers. I mean, we, in particular when they were being asked with regard to um, removing um, the cap in terms of uh, um, dentists and the appointments that people couldn't get hold of and stuff like that. And I also noticed at the very beginning of the meeting uh, where, the, um, where they were asked with regard to why some of the information was actually handed in not on time so that the, the account of PAC could actually investigate it. Well, yeah, what was going on there was, was when the PAC produces a report with recommendations from how a department can improve their spending, they have to reply in what's known as a treasury minute. In other words, it's their answer to the criticisms. And the reason that Meg was giving the permanent undersecretary such a hard time was simply that the Department of Health and Social Care were slower in coming back with their responses than just about any other department in Whitehall. And I think the permanent undersecretary sort of got his tactics wrong and he tried to sort of, uh, you know, uh, not really give a very convincing reply. And Meg's quite a formidable lady, and she really pushed him on it. So that made, if you like, for quite a lively opening uh, to, the, to the committee. But, I mean, what we saw for two and a half hours would not have been out of place in an episode of Yes Minister, quite frankly. No, it, 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 you're absolutely spot on. Well, listen, Mark, when you pushed the CEO on NHS England, Amanda Pritchard, for an answer as to when the workforce plans will be released in order to improve staff retention rates as well as uh, reduce the burden upon the NHS through the cost of using agency staff, uh, this is actually uh, what he had to say in response. So... We must have this workforce plan to explain how that pressure can be relieved. There are clinical staff leaving in far larger numbers than anyone would want. Yeah. Many of them basically go and do agency work, turn themselves almost into one man, woman, man or woman companies and then come back in part time, uh, which is why some of the hospitals, for instance, are under such immense pressure. So we must have this plan. I'll just ask you again, very simply, when will we get it? So we have been commissioned jointly with Health Education England to do the work on the plan. Um, actually, it's, it's going well. Uh, we're engaging widely, as you would expect, because it's got to be a plan that people recognise and own. Uh, but it's our uh, expectation that we will have something that we can deliver back to the department, um, certainly within the timescale that we were discussing. Which is, Sorry, just to be just clear, when the timescale is, yeah. So we are hoping to have it finished this side of Christmas. I wouldn't want to give that as a guarantee, but certainly this financial year is what we've been talking about. So wait, so hang on. So it might be by Christmas, or it might be by the end of March, the end of the financial year. Wow. 
So the commitment that we were, have made is to make sure that what we do, we have cons we've engaged with widely. So doing something, for example, that the Royal Colleges haven't looked at and don't recognise that uh, some of our other important um, time scale, partners time scale. and that. stakeholders time scale. aren't involved in so you're, okay, you're means it won't work. So that's why I'm giving you some flexibility. Look, you're still not firmly committing. There are people leaving the NHS in very large numbers. This plan is designed to help arrest that. You consistently, none of you will give us a date when we're going to see it. You've just given us two different dates. Paralysis by analysis. That should be your unofficial motto, because time and again, that's what NHS England actually does. Right, paralysis by analysis. Can you sort of define what, what, what you mean by that? I, I understand, it, it, but uh, it, yeah. It basically, it's, it, it's, um, it's a phrase that comes from the military world. And, and what it basically means is you spend so long thinking about something and examining it and re-examining it and examining it again, you don't actually do anything. You're forever going round in circles, reanalyzing the same problem, and you don't actually end up taking a decision. So that is what paralysis by analysis means. And unfortunately, the upper echelons of the NHS are extremely prone to this. So I, I just want to make something clear. I've got absolute respect for the clinical people in the NHS, for the doctors, for the nurses, for the paramedics who work extremely hard and who did brilliantly during the pandemic. My issue is not with any of them. My issue is with the very senior leaders in the NHS the senior bureaucrats, some of whom are paid far more money than our own Prime Minister, and who don't, in my view, always provide the kind of firm leadership that the doctors and the nurses and the paramedics deserve. And that upper echelon of the department is extremely bureaucratic, and as you will have seen from that clip, finds it very difficult to take decisions. And as I said, the reason this plan is so important is we all know lots of people are leaving the NHS because they're fed up with all the bureaucracy. This plan is meant to kind of save the day. So all the staff and all the MPs are very keen to see it. And all the department does is keep putting it off. <laughs>